This is Mission Control Houston. The uh, space station itself has hundreds of experiments going on on board uh, at any one point in time during these expeditions. But did you know that there's an experiment on board that takes a look at a special classification of water? Because water sometimes, sometimes can be neither a solid, liquid, or a gas. Here to explain this way better than I can is Michael Hicks, who's from NASA's Glenn Research Center. He is the principal investigator for what's called the Supercritical Water Mixture Experiment. Mr. Hicks, thank you very much for joining us. First of all, let's talk about what supercritical water actually is. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, this, uh, let me just uh, first start with uh, maybe somewhat of an unsatisfying answer, but uh, simple, and that uh, supercritical water is uh, simply uh, water that's taken past its uh, critical point, and, and for water, the critical point is 374 degrees Celsius or uh, 705 degrees Fahrenheit, and um, its pressure is 218 atmosphere, uh, which would be uh, a little over uh, 3,000 uh, psi absolute. So, so that's supercritical water um, when it's taken past its uh, um, critical point, and. Um, Probably, uh, to give you a little more insight into the experiment itself, um, it might be good if I, if I created a visual. Um, if you could imagine taking a pot of water and we put that, uh, uh, we fill that pot of water with uh, maybe about um, uh, a quarter full. And, the, and we put a lid on it and we uh, heated it up, uh, the pressure would build up, and the pressure would not build up as fast as the temperature would, and eventually you would develop a, a vapor, which would then uh, turn to a, a gas once you pass the, the critical point. And then when you compress that gas further, it would uh, go into the supercritical range. And we, we have the same thing on the other side. If we filled up the pot with... Um, let's say 50% water, then you would um, increase the, you would, if you heated it up and increased the pressure, the, the pressure would uh, build up. Uh, eventually, the pot would fill with water and um, because the pressure would condense whatever vapor was in there, and you would then uh, cross over into the supercritical range. But uh, the problem with that is that you really wouldn't be able to see exactly when you crossed over to the supercritical regime because the, um, uh, the, the, the pot in those instances would be filled uh, either completely with vapor or completely with, uh, with liquid just because of the nature of where we, uh, where we started at. But um, with our experiment, what we try to do is we try to maintain the uh, vapor in the presence of, of liquid throughout the heat-up period. So as we're heating up this, uh, this pot of water, um, we um, actually uh, have two, uh, two phases, the vapor phase and the liquid phase, all the way up through the critical point. And in order to do that, you have to fill this uh, pot of water with uh, exactly the proper amount of vapor and, and uh, liquid. And so that's uh, roughly about one-third liquid and two-thirds vapor. And at that point, then you cross right through the critical point, and you can actually visually determine when you get to the critical point uh, by looking at um, the, uh, the disappearance of the separation between the vapor and the liquid, which would be the uh, meniscus. So that, in, a, in essence, is the experiment that was performed about four years ago by, the, uh, by our French colleagues. And what we are doing now with the supercritical water mixture experiment is we put a, a uh, small pinch of salt in this water. Uh, we're actually using sodium sulfate, and we uh, put that in solution. And we then um, heat it up. Uh, we then look at, uh, we then cross the critical point and we're looking at uh, when this critical point shifts because our critical point will change a little bit because of the presence of the, uh, of the salt in the water. So that, in essence, uh, in a nutshell, is the experiment that we're performing. Okay, let's talk about real-world applications for this. The way I understand it is that uh, there's actually some cities and some also some uh, Navy ships that are kind of using the supercritical water to uh, sort of, you know, clean waste and things like that. Talk about, uh, you know, real-world examples of how, what this, you know, what this does for people on Earth. Yeah, one of the one of the great uh, advantages of supercritical water is that it becomes a terrific solvent for uh, uh, organic material, organic waste. 
Uh, and this is because of this uh, change in uh, material properties or thermal physical properties when it goes into its supercritical regime. And so there's a um, there's a facility on the, that's um, in Orlando, Florida, that was just put online not too long ago. The city of Orlando uses supercritical water oxidation technology to um, basically convert all their waste to uh, either they essentially burn their waste in in a supercritical water reactor, and the byproducts are then carbon dioxide and uh, and water. So it's a relatively benign uh, product stream once they um, take this uh, the supercritical water waste stream and and, and oxidize it. So what's uh, what's next? I hear that you guys have another run of this experiment coming up. I think in March, maybe, or whenever it's going to be. So what are what are the next steps? Well, the next step would be to um, basically repeat the the test that we had already done in July, and that that's coming up in March. And so March third, we're scheduled for an eighteen day um, uh, test sequence, and we'll um, we'll have another test sequence after that, uh, probably in April. So starting in March, we'll, we'll become busy again with this experiment. All right. Michael Hicks from NASA's Glenn Research Center, thank you very much for joining us here on Space Station Live. You're welcome. Thank you for your interest. Thank you. Again, that is the uh, supercritical water mixture experiment. Of course, you can read more about that on nasa.gov station. Just take a look at research and technology there on the left-hand side, and you can uh, look up pretty much anything that these expedition crews are working on on a day-to-day -day basis, or you can look up the uh, science in alphabetical order.